I'm Bruce Langelant, President of the Confederation of Meningitis Organisations. My own daughter had bacterial meningitis and it changed our lives forever. No parent should have to watch their child become ill or potentially die from a vaccine preventable disease. This video is intended to inform you about meningitis and the importance of vaccination. We must act now. Meningitis is a serious infection of the outer lining of the brain. It can be caused by a virus or a bacterium, but the bacterium Neisseria meningitidis is of major concern. This can manifest in two different life-threatening ways, bacterial meningitis as I've mentioned, but an even more deadly form, meningococcal septicemia or blood poisoning. And they put her in intensive care and she was still talking because she wanted to drink her milk and she was still laughing a bit and that. So as I said to her, my wife's talking to her and she said, I love you all the world, mummy. And then she fell asleep, basically. And I knew it was serious when I would see my sister talking to the doctor that's behind all this commotion that's around me. And the doctor is looking at my sister and he's like, where's your mother? And he looks at her and he's like, she needs to be here. To become infected with a meningococcus requires close and prolonged contact with someone else. Usually it occurs in a family or sometimes with teenagers uh, in groups. Meningococcal disease is most common in young children under the age of one year, babies. And they're the ones whose immune systems are just not ready for this germ. They're immature and unable to cope with this nasty invasive bacterium. This disease occurs really very suddenly. The symptoms are rather very similar to the flu and that's why it's really very difficult to be able to diagnose this disease very early. The meningococcus is a very dynamic bacterium with two faces, the transmission and the disease. And the driving force for this disease is in the adolescence. The typical college experience, going out, not taking care of myself, going to concerts, meningitis, that's how it spreads, spreads like the flu. Meningococcal disease progresses so rapidly that there's only a few golden hours in which doctors and others can act. And if these are not taken advantage of, patients can arrive at hospital close to death. I do remember waking up from time to time to see my limbs turning from red to purple to black to eventually rotting off my body. The treatment of the meningococcal disease needs to be administrated very early. So the best way to prevent, to overcome this disease, is to have a very good immune response. And this can be done by a vaccination. Around 10 to 20 percent is the usual case fatality rate associated to meningococcal disease and significant morbidity. Because she was fine at nursery. And the next day, we're picking her up from the morgue in a blanket. And that's only a space of 12 hours. I had my hands and legs amputated. My legs are below the knee. I have like this much leg. And then um, my, all my fingers were amputated. Five of these zero groups are responsible for uh, virtually all cases in the world. Zero groups A, B, C, W, and Y. But the most common form, meningococcal B, in North America, Europe, Australia and elsewhere, we don't have a vaccine for yet. There's no known vaccine for the strain that killed my daughter at the minute. That's uh, meningitis B. Probably in a couple of years, we will also have the possibility to prevent not only serogroup A, C, W, Y, but also serogroup B disease. There are now several safe and effective vaccines against meningococcal disease. The best thing you can do by your family is to get your children immunised against the widest array of serogroups. This whole disease could have been prevented. You know, prevent what is preventable, you know, get vaccinated. I hope the stories you've heard inspire you to act and do more to protect our children and communities from meningococcal disease. It is important to see your doctor about vaccines available for your family. To learn more about bacterial meningitis, vaccines, and to read stories from survivors and families, contact comoonline.org. Thank you.